Hey everybody, welcome to the GMG Review. Today we're taking a look at Hero Quest against the Ogre Horde Quest Pack. Um, this is an expansion for this giant thing right here. The Hero Quest game system, High Adventure in World of Magic, the Avon Hill uh, slash Hasbro reimagining of classic Hero Quest, um, which you've, if you've never seen, I have played sometimes wrongly, but with much hilarity, all 14 original missions in the original 1980s um, version. So we haven't gotten to this one yet, but it's it's not for lack of wanting, it's just for lack of, well, just having another pack of scallywags as memorable as the ones that I had last time coming and want to do it. So it is going to be assembled, but this is a new expansion uh, that contains new miniatures, new quests, uh, a whole new set of like dungeon tiles and doors and stuff like that. Um, and some new heroes too, actually, two druids representing your quest to basically try and fight uh, against the Durgrushed, which is an ogre horde um, hellbent on mayhem and chaos. Uh, and Mentor has basically sent you off on another mission to go have an adventure. So let's crack it open. Um, I, I will say that one of the things that's great about Modern Hero Quest is just the quality of components. So you're gonna get the quest book, which I won't ruin for you, um, but contains new rules for things like characters that have two stat lines, which I thought was a cool little add-on. So for instance, the uh, ogres themselves, they have multi-phase stat lines. So like a spawn of the pit, this big pit fighting ogre, when he gets wounded, when he loses his four body points, he then goes into a rage. So his defense drops, but his attack goes up and he's still got speed and body and stuff like that. So neat new kind of rules for that. Rules for large monsters that take up two tiles um, and new like uh, allied animals like the wolf that can hang out with the druids. Ogre mercenaries in this quest pack, you can have mercenary friends uh, like Grisbella Hammerhand, the reigning master of battle at the World's End Tournament because they're basically like running a fighting pit. And then new Dread Sorcerer spells uh, to use in your quests. You also have things like the World's End Tournament where you have to go into a fighting pit and basically have to survive um, and do like solo combats. And then you can do that as part of quests as well. So you get these great uh, team rosters for the tournaments. And there's kind of a, like a little mini game in here for using the, um, the, the, the sort of like additional tiles and stuff that come in as like an in-between quest sort of thing. And there's the main quests themselves where you have to go through the tournament gauntlet to start off with. And you're just fighting on these board pits for the most part as you make your way into the actual dungeon itself. So again, I don't want to spoil too much, but it uses all the components that are in here, um, which are also double-sided. So for instance, you've got kind of the arena pit, and then you've also got this crazy magma room. <laughs> you've got some cool uh, overlays that you can have as additional rules as well, like the magic carpet room, the all-seeing eye, um, and then new status tokens for the different spells like mind lock, a chasm pit. Um, and then all the additional sort of like guard tokens and stuff and undead tokens that you might need for having your adventure. So let's take a look at the components. Man, first off, like if this is average hero quest model size, check out the size of these ogres. They are ginormous. You get the Ogre King here. He's a bad mamma jamma. Um, we'll pull out their stack cards just so you can get an idea of how, how dangerous these guys are because it's, it's pretty, the answer is pretty dangerous. <laughs> um, so the, uh, the Ogre Champion, Ogre Mercenary, Ogre Warriors, uh, are the new baddies, uh, and we of course want to see him for the Ogre Lord. He's got a movement score of uh, four squares. He has six attack dice, six defense dice, 10 body points, and five mind points. He is a horrifying bad guy. Um, you've got the champion, who's like the big pit fighter. He's the one with the multi-phase as well, so he's got multi-phase attacks. Um, he's got the movement six, attack dice five, defense dice four, six body points, and one mind point. And then the commander, who's like a champion level guy, he moves four. He's got one less defense dice than the big commander, uh, and two mind points. Then there's the little ogres over here, the mercenaries. They can be used as sort of like um, NPCs for the ogres and also hired on. Um, and you got the Ogre Warriors too, which are the standard fighters, which are over here. These guys. So you get, you get four models, but two of them are different each, right? So you got this guy with like a bone club, and the guy's got kind of like a bone ax. Nice, nice little differential in like the model count. Then we have our new um, bad guys, uh, and these are add-ons basically for the existing ones. So the Skeleton Warriors are in the main box set as our goblins. In this game, you're also gonna have skeleton archers added in who get two attack dice that can attack non-adjacent targets. Uh, but the skeleton archer rolls one attack dice against adjacent targets. So they're worse up close, but they're better at fighting far away. And then the archers are the same thing. Goblins and then orc archers who have three attack dice at range and one attack dice against adjacent targets. So that's cool is basically you have ranged guys who will get peppered in with the regular guys. And there's some alternate rules for doing that when you spawn them. Now, so you got all the mind lock spells. These are the evil Lich Telepathy spells. So things like the attacker and defender each roll combat dice equal to their mind points. So if you fight, you do have mind lock. 
For every skull scored by the attacker, the defender is frozen for one turn. If no skulls are scored uh, against the defender, it has no effect. That's what the counters are for. Um, and these are all mind locks uh, as like a, a, a random spell they could do. They got mind bursts, which is mind bullets. The attacking defender then roll combat dice equal to mind points. Uh, and then it's damage because basically you're blowing the guy's skull up, which is great. And then dominate. Um, which is the attacker and defender each roll combat dice equal to their mind points. If the attacker scores at least two skulls, the spell succeeds. The attacker then immediately takes the defender's movement in action. At the end of the attacker's turn, the spell ends. Basically, you take control of one of the heroes. Uh, and then these are the druid abilities, like Shapeshift. So these are the druid spells you can get. Shapeshift, the spell may be cast on yourself. Shapeshift gets you an additional defense dice, and when attacking an adjacent target, an additional attack dice, because you're basically training like a wear creature. Uh, the spell ends if you suffer any damage, the spell restores if your body points return to full. So basically, if you ever get your body points back, then you get back to the spell. Uh, Pixie, the spell conjures a woodland pixie, who takes one of the following actions before disappearing. Restore up to two body points, or reveal all the traps and secret doors in any location you can see. And then finally, Life Force, the spell can be cast on anyone here, including yourself. The target immediately restores four lost body points, uh, not exceeding their total. And these are our new heroes. So you get, what's cool is you get a male and female um, character model for every hero quest bad guy and good guy now. Uh, I think most of them have like an alternate. Um, for the druids in particular, you're like a halfling druid or maybe like a, I don't know, you're little, you're kind of tiny. So they're on the next level over here, so I'll, I'll reveal them. I think they're halflings, like they're just not big. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you get their wolf buddy who hangs out with them. So whoever they get, they get a start wolf. So they have two red dice um, to do movement, and then their dagger is their starting weapon. But they got six body points and four mind points. They're kind of like a cross between a wizard and a, and a elf a little bit. Like they're a little bit more, not very stabby, but you can, you can level up and be stabby. Uh, you're the druid, a woodland guardian and potent hero. You're a powerful physical combatant when under the effect of your shape, shape shift spell, uh, but can be weakened when your resources are depleted and you can never well met, wear metal armor. But to defend you, you get your wolf. He's your companion. Uh, he's movement 10, three attack dice, two defend points, five body points, and one mind point. And the wolf can attack diagonally because he's super, um, he's super like attacky. Before a hero begins a quest with fewer than four heroes, they can recruit an animal ally to accompany them. So this takes the place of a hero. The wolf is bonded to one hero and takes a turn immediately following the turn of the allied hero. And they can move, attack, defend, and perform, uh, but cannot perform any other actions like using potions and open doors because they're, they're animals. And that's pretty much it. So that's what we get in here. Uh, on top of, we get some new terrain features. So we get like a cool um, throne for the ogre lord. Uh, we get some ogre doors. These are for the fighting pit, right? So you get these big like portcullises and they actually open, which is a really nice touch, right? So instead of having open and closed doors, these are actually full plastic doors that open and close. And then finally, we just get some little stone doors. Right, little like stone, I don't know, they just look like little men here, but they're just, it's nice that you get these like textured doors to finish everything off. So I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, there's a slot here for, I think, dice. Oh, no, it's for the tokens, sorry. It's for when you punch the tokens. Um, I'm excited about this because one, I just love that these models are so huge. Like I have, because I have the, the crowdfunded version of the starter set, I have some of the bigger miniatures. Like I have like the dragon and stuff like that. But these ogres are legit ginormous. Like the dragon has to fit into a single square because they hadn't really come up with these additional rules yet. Um, I ripped this, I'm just gonna put this one over here on instead. Um, but I like that there's like some like two space monsters now that they're experimenting with this. This feels like a cool, expansion for the game that takes it beyond additional hero quest by having new locations, new ways of fighting, uh, new types of bad guys, like the multi-phase bad guys. Having never played any of the expansions for the original hero quest, um, I can't super compare them, but I will say that if it, 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 not having any expectations, I was surprised by how much new material was in this quest book that basically added to the core game. So. I, I'm really like, this is actually getting me wanting to now paint up the original core box so that I can run this uh, and give it a go. Cause I've done the core box with the old miniatures. I feel like I should probably paint the new miniatures. I just need to find three people that want to do this with me. <laughs> actually, sorry, four people that want to do this with me. Cause we have this setup now where we could very easily film it right here in the studio um, and do like a good, I think do it really justice. Like not necessarily the way we had it before, but do it like multi-cam and do it justice. So. I'm pretty pumped for it. I'm hoping that the, um, the, the people come around that will be equally fun and ridiculous to play HeroQuest with. And this feels like the, uh, the right expansion to start off with. So there it is, HeroQuest against the Ogre Horde. Um, definitely, definitely like more expansion than I thought we were gonna get for HeroQuest. 
um, and was surprised by how much new material was actually in this box. So if you have the new edition of Hero Quest, I would highly recommend this as an expansion. Just to give you like the, even if you just want the new characters, the new doors, and like the additional heroes with like the the the, the um, archers and stuff to mix into your you know your orcs and your goblins and stuff like that. It kind of adds, like if you're not finished playing this version, the big version, um, it still kind of adds to the overall experience. And then it's a whole other quest line that you can play through on top of that with like new locations and stuff too. So definitely value. Um, I'm not sure what it retails for, but because I don't, I don't look those things up, so I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna know right now. <laughs> I don't think it's out yet actually. Um, but when you can't get your hands on it, uh, it definitely has everything I would be looking for for an expansion. So big thanks for watching. We'll see you for more GMG reviews. Then I'm Ash at Borgang.